What's up? It's Unwarranted Music Opinion. The intro you know and love. That's this one. I'm Brian Courtney. I'm here with June Lindbergh. Hello. And uh, Chaz Jenkins. This feels weird. This week is an Unwarranted Music Opinions themed episode. It's, um, what are we doing? <laughs> it's video game music. Yeah, we're doing video games. We're covering the music of video games. Various video games that uh, are good. Excellent, excellent intro. Good form. I give well, it a. Maybe games. you should take over. Maybe you should. Maybe no. you should be the one to do the intro from now on. No, <laughs> we already tried that last season. Cut off that cough. I can't cut off the. <laughs> oh my god. We can start over. Hold on. No, no, we can't start over because you decided you wanted to do the intro. So this is it. We're going. We just take our it first from album the that we're talking about. No, the first album that we're talking about. Uh, it's our first ever unwarranted music opinions fan submission, which basically means one of our friends was like, hey, you should review this. And the album that we were given uh, was the Sims 3 original soundtrack. Uh, Chaz, if you want to introduce this, because I've actually never played Sims 3. I don't know very much about this. Okay. Uh, the- it's actually a real-time strategy war game. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the Sims 3 original soundtrack was composed by Steve Yablonski. That is how you actually pronounce it. And was submitted by my wonderful girlfriend, Katrina Allman. She suggested this for the theme, and I thought it was varied enough that it would fit perfectly in the landscape of the other albums that we will be talking about later down the line. It was released in 2009. Yes, it was released in 2009, and as I mentioned, it was composed by Steve Yablonski, who, interestingly enough, this is the only video game he did. He's most known for his work with the blockbuster series Transformers, the Michael Bay films. Uh, He's done a few, a lot of horror films, and he mainly does, like, big blockbuster soundtracks. So, if you look at, like, his catalog, The Sims 3 sticks out like a sore thumb. It's very interesting why he did a video game soundtrack for The Sims. Uh, To give some more context, The Sims is a very popular uh, gaming franchise that many people know. It's really easy to tell when you're looking at a Sims game. It's essentially you create your character, you get married, you have kids, you build your house, you get a job, and you live your life. It's all the wonderful things of life without any of the stress whatsoever. It's magnificent. from what I've seen, most people just like lock their Sims in the bathroom, barricade the doors, and then watch them burn to death. Yeah, <laughs> like I think that's the real appeal of the game. Like I, I people whose content is not gaming related will play The Sims, so it's kind of like the casual gamers game. But I've seen them do <laughs> some like, really. Oh, this isn't real. Yeah, do some really interesting stuff with it. But yeah, I've it seen came people out. People run their fanfics in The Sims as well. Like their their favorite shows, they'll just make those characters and like work out their fanfics in The Sims. And now that we're talking about it, I realize I know a lot about this game. <laughs> I have never played a Sims game, but this album was pretty nice. Uh, it's basically just like the cinematic, classical, orchestrated. The best way I could describe very it. Very easy to listen to. Yeah, it's kind of easy listening, but the best way I would describe it is like montage music. Like that's the perfect way I would describe this music. It sounds like music you'd hear in a documentary, like background music, or funny enough, it reminds me of the music they would play at like Disney World to give some atmosphere to the parks. It's like, because it's kind of futuristic, so I could see it being played at like Tomorrowland or something. It was really trippy, but yeah, montage music is like the perfect way because according to my girlfriend who submitted this, she says that this music only plays, to give some context for how it works in the video game, this music only plays when you're like in build mode, I think. But when you're in the actual, like, world of Sims, there's no music playing. It's only when you're picking furniture, building your house, any sort of that thing. That's when this music plays. And I think it's, like, the perfect kind of music to represent that. I always feel like something's happening when the music's going on. It's very, like, whimsical, you know? Yes, it's it's incredibly whimsical. (laughs) I don't think that this album has a whole lot of variety. I think it's probably the most video game-y I don't know. I think Mario has that title. Yeah. Well, I think that in terms of like a full through album listen, which is an interesting experiment that we did with this episode, 
trying to listen to these video game soundtracks as albums Mm -hmm. and discuss them as albums. Um, And of course, we'll probably also, you know, we're discussing how it works as a. I feel like we have to. I feel like we have to. There's like to give more context and some sort of choices. The the thing is, when you're looking at them as an album, there's really only two things you can look out for. It's that one that the tracks are good in the first place, and two, like, is the order they're in complementing one another. That's really all it comes down to for me with these records, all of them. You know, a lot of the times the songs don't necessarily reinforce each other mm-hmm. or, you know, like you're not you're you're basically getting like a collection of different tracks because they're made with visual elements and you don't really have those here. So you're either relying upon your ability to recall these images based on the sounds because you know them or to just get an idea of the atmosphere that it's trying to set. And I feel like with The Sims, you kind of get the atmosphere it sets, but it gets super samey. And I, it's, um, I disagree. I knew I'd be in the minority here. I think it does sound a little samey. However, I think each track is very memorable. Like, I never mistook another track for a different track. I always felt like each track had a certain aspect of it that made it stand out or gave it its own sort of flavor. Like, obviously, the sameness of it, it comes from that, a lot of the instruments. While varied, I love that there's, like, strings, guitar, percussive instruments, xylophones, marimbas, the choir, which is the best Anytime the Sims choir comes in is like a banger. Uh, but a lot of those instruments are used multiple times throughout the songs, but the compositions are very smart. If you really listen, there's a lot happening. Uh, it's constantly moving into these different movements. Like, no track ever gets boring for me personally. But I, I do get your complaint there. I just feel like in the composition is what really uh, keeps it from being too samey. Like, no tracks blend together, I think. Especially in the back half. I feel like that's when it really picks up for me. I think the back, the back half, half is better, is yeah. Yeah. For sure. Cartographer's, uh, the cartographer track is my favorite one. I love the keyboard in that closing track. It's so awesome. I like the production, too. It's, it's um, very clean I mean, and punchy. That's pretty it much is. the case for yeah. all of these. Like, it's, it, I mean, as far, it's all synthetic, right? So it's all, you know, so, it, I mean, it's not, that doesn't mean it's meant to be come out clean, but obviously nothing here. Is I don't important. know. I, I, uh, I feel like MIDI, like the it's term MIDI is only used been. for Parappa and Mario. I feel like for Sims and Last of Us, I feel like a lot of these instruments are genuine. I don't know. Well, for, for that's true. That's actually true for Last of Us. I can't speak for I can, I would the guess Sims, that... Sims MIDI for sure. But I think I know the Last of Us is acoustic and I wouldn't be surprised if some of the stuff on Parappa was uh, recorded acoustic. I would guess that. I think that there's probably acoustic instrumentation just given Steve Yablonski. Yes, Yablonski. Given his back catalog and career as a composer, I wouldn't be surprised if some of this, like if he had just people and musicians that he works with fairly regularly when he makes his soundtracks and if he didn't just use them. To I think it's really well. interesting that he compose this soundtrack like i mentioned earlier like he does blockbuster films and horror films it's so odd that he was picked to do the sims 3 soundtrack i find that very fascinating and i think it really works like i don't know i feel like he has a real mind for the way that a song moves i just love the flow of each track like how they there's constantly an instrument moving the song along like i love how in the theme they're passing the melodies onto different instruments. First, the violins get the me- the melody, and then electric guitar will get the melody in the second half of the track. I loved that. For me, this uh, album is just a little too long for what it does. Yes, it's a uh, little long. Feel, just a smidge. I never feel really... Um, it's not like I ever want it to be over, because this is just supremely easy to listen to music. There's absolutely nothing offensive about what's going on here. And I guess it's possible that, that could be a turnoff for some people, but I think, as you said, that the compositions are strong enough on their own, and the production is solid for this just to be a really nice album to throw on in the background mm-hmm. while you're doing pretty much whatever. Um, so it's not really something that I'm going to come back to and listen to as an album very frequently at all. But this is a, a well put together selection of music, <sighs> and it probably fits with the game. Very, very well. I think out of everything we've talked about here, it's the most video game soundtrack feeling thing, not because of the style of the music, but just because of the fact that we have 17 tracks, all probably within 15 seconds in length of each other, about three minutes long, 
that all have a very similar vibe to them, mm-hmm. uh, which doesn't really stand out to me as being like an album structure. Right. Uh, or if it was an album structure, it might be something I'd criticize and say, hey, there needs to be a little bit more variety on this record. Yeah, um, I'd agree with that. In terms of the dynamics, it doesn't, there's not a lot of like very loud and then very quiet moments. There's not a whole lot of, there's just not a whole lot of variety here, which for what it is, is fine. And that's what I think makes it kind of a, the most video game soundtrack esque thing, just because it, it, it feels like it's very. I don't think, I mean, I'm, I'm saying this for my point. I don't think you can put the strength of these games on the back of these soundtracks. I think it's just the other way around. It's like, you know, like the game isn't good because the soundtrack is good. I've played all of these games except for Parappa. And so like, you know, The Sims, I always turn the music off. I don't necessarily care for the music in the first place. Mm-hmm. Listening to it this way was honestly a little bit better because I don't find it to, in the game, I actually find it to be super annoying. I don't like it when I'm playing the game. It gets on my nerves. But like just listening to it like this was kind of like, okay, this is pleasant. I can actually dig this. It's just super linear, super repetitive songs. They're fine. They're nice vibes. Like that's pretty much what it feels like to me. I, I don't really care a whole lot one way or the other. I think the back half is more enjoyable than the first half, but I don't really remember anything about it when I'm done. Like nothing's really catching my ear, which I think is deliberate. You know, like I think there's maybe small things that they're doing, but. It doesn't hook me or anything like that. I think The Sims is a kind of game that if you're really into it, you put in a lot of hours making new saves, trying new things, or, you know. So maybe the music starts to grow on you in a way the more you play it. But I never really played the game a lot in the first place, and it never really super hooked me. You know, as far as, like, a game and as far as, like, this album. You know, I wasn't super hot on it or anything like that. I wasn't super negative on it. Just don't have really strong feelings one way or the other. I think it's okay. It's kind of pleasant sometimes. This was a cool listen. I'm glad we listened to this. I would give it like a strong six, I think, because it's not something that I'm going to come back to, but it makes very good background music. Uh, It's well put together. It's very, very pleasant. I don't think it's much more than very, very pleasant, but that doesn't mean it isn't worth listening to or talking about. I'd go more with like a strong five or a light sit and like somewhere in, in that range. It's probably closer to a five than it is a six, but it's kind of whatever to me. It's okay. I'm 100% not memeing here when I say that I could totally justify giving this a light eight on my part. I find that a lot of the tracks are very fun to listen to. I find myself being able to distinguish between each track, sort of like how you were with Apex Twin when we reviewed that in season one, June. Each track, I was like, oh, here's that moment. Here's that memorable moment in this track, you know, so on and so forth. I do agree it's more of a background listen. However, I think the smart composition, the strong production, the flow of the track of the album, and the consistency and how well packaged it is, I totally justify giving it a light aid. I think it's something that I would totally come back to to just put on the background and enjoy, but actually really enjoy it, like for whatever I might be doing. Honestly, out of the whole bunch here, this is probably the one I enjoyed the most. Not gonna lie. And I'm not saying that because my girlfriend picked it. 100% no bias here. No, well, now that you say that, I don't feel like there's any bias at all. <laughs> As a video game soundtrack, I think The Sims, definitely like strong 9, 10 area. It fits the whole purpose of the game beautifully. Like I mentioned in the review, montage music, the sense that a lot is happening and the music reflects that. And the music only plays in Sims 3 when you're doing something like building or, or rearranging your furniture or any sort of thing like that. So I think as a soundtrack to the game... The aesthetic, the packaging, the sound and feel of it completely fits. Um, I would run The Sims probably like a strong six. It's like the highest. I don't really care for it a whole lot. It's fine. It serves a purpose. That's really how I feel about it. It's a very functional soundtrack. That's just kind of pleasant. I'm going to go with like an eight as far as video game soundtrack goes for The Sims. Uh, just because I've never played The Sims and I kind of felt like I was vicariously understanding the appeal of the game and experiencing it while I was listening to the soundtrack. Uh, Like I said, it's definitely put together more like a soundtrack than an album. So I think, yeah, I can definitely imagine listening to this as I was playing the game. Again, I, you know, I haven't played The Sims, but it definitely, I don't know, something about it just works for me in that regard. My pick was Gustavo Santolaya's composition for The Last of Us, a game released in 
2013, yeah, 2013, PS3 exclusive, single-player story-based game. Had a multiplayer element of super underrated because it was really good. Mostly acoustic, quiet. It's pretty minimalist, I think, in a lot of ways. Tries to create a feeling. Like all these tracks do, really. Like, it just tries to create a feeling. I'm interested because I know June's played the game. Chaz, I don't think you have. I've seen a full um, playthrough, though, so I know the story. Okay, cool. So, you, so kind of having that context going in, I think, helps a little bit. <clears throat> so, none of us have heard it in a vacuum, basically. Um, right, yeah. My thoughts on it are kind of quick. The only two that I listened to were each track was standing out, and I think this one would have been the case. That would have been the case for this one, too, if I'd spent a little more time with it, was the tracks are standing out as individual tracks, you know? And that's Mario and Parappa, where the tracks, you know, are very di- you know not i mean they're not like worlds apart or anything but they're different they're more distinct i think than the these first two we've talked about but you know i definitely prefer this to the sims one i'm a lot closer to the game two it's just really ge- I, I, that's kind of where i'm at like listening wise right now just this really gentle guitar just really gentle song progressions you're getting more into the ambient stuff aren't you not necessarily just gentle sounding music you know the way the tracks kind of glide along like they're super, you know, they're taking their time, but not like drawing it out. You know, I, I just see it as super gentle, super melancholic kind of music. Not always melancholy necessarily, but because I'm associating it with the game, that's where it, it, yeah. it goes. So, you know, I, I just find it to be a super pretty, super gentle kind of record that is, you know, it sounds super clean. I think it definitely has some more uh, qualities in the production I like more than The Sims. With The Sims, everything feels... It feels like everything is just even, like throughout. I feel like this one has a is a little more dynamic in its sound and has a little more care taken to some of the instruments in the mix. I think it's as funny as opposed to just trying to make sure everything can be heard. It's kind of like what's the most important part of this song. Well, it's interesting you mentioned that. I wanted to make a quick note, and I didn't mention this in the Sims review, that I think it's all about how it's packaged. Because when you think about the game of The Sims, I think the music and the way it's portrayed, produced, reflects that beautifully, where it's kind of even like you're doing a lot of the same things, you know, you're doing daily things in life. It's just in a vacuum where it's not stressful, it's not a chore, it's fun. You know, that's what the whole draw of Sims is. Whereas in The Last of Us, a lot of these songs have very high intensity moments, very quiet moments, kind of like The Last of Us. There's a lot of dramatic elements, action elements, very quiet. A lot of the video game is no music. It's just very uh, atmospheric, foresty sounds, you know, because you're exploring, collecting, scavenging. A lot of the music doesn't kick in until the cutscenes, or you're fighting zombies or raiders or anything like that. So I think the music portrays that beautifully, at least for the first two albums, I think have that sort of thing going. It just depends on which one you like better. And Brian, you mentioned you like this one better than The Sims. For me personally, I think I like The Sims better in that regard. I think that... This album does give it off a very chilling and atmospheric mood that fits in perfectly with the whole apocalyptic setting that The Last of Us takes place in. I love the use of banjo, acoustic guitar, and violin. The violin in this is chilling. I don't even, I can't even comprehend how they're playing that instrument to get this really eerie, bone chilling sound out of it. So cool. Uh, and the banjo it's too. More yeah. than just how it's played. I think it's how they go out of their way to. I don't kinda know. It just feels like the person is meticulously like drawing the bow across the strings. It's it get it really adds to the mood and atmosphere. My hugest issue with this album is that way more than the Sims. The in my dueling opinion, banjos track. <laughs> no, I wasn't into it either. I thought it was really out of place. No, no. Right at the end too. <laughs> No, uh, good meme. Is how one note this is. Like, a lot Oh, of, I disagree. Oh, I think a lot of this just starts to really sound samey, especially near the back half. I, Like, there definitely is an album listening experience in mind here, because a lot of the melodies are repeated throughout the album, but have a different context. Well, they're reprising certain tracks, yes. and that's true, and they do that in the game as and well. And I dig that. Scenes that you However, see there was... With s- the, the, the most... Rem- the most memorable of which is the Last of Us theme. The you know yeah yeah, the, which is one of the best uh, songs on the album. It's, like a, it's one of the best songs on the and album. And all the sure. reprises are really good too. Yeah, I think I think I all... agree. I think the reprises add a lot to this whole thing just as a whole. 
It kind of helps Especially, divide it up into sections conveniently because yeah, it, it, it does it for the game, obviously. And I don't know how the tracks were arranged here if they were based on that order, but it's funny because I think they, they are. The same thing here. I think the flow of the video game is how the flow of the, and I think that goes for mm. all of the other albums that we're talk, we'll be talking about, is that the flow of the story is how the music flows as well. Each track is like set in a place where it would be in the video game storyline. I think this album has a lot of variety to it. I um, uh, just and atmospheres i think the entire thing is just this very eerie sometimes very calm and contemplative in the same way that the last of us could be but also it can be very chilling like you've mentioned in the same way that the last of us can be i think every track here really is just extremely well made and all of the melodies that are reprised throughout are beautiful i think that the combination of like dark ambience and the Spanish folk guitar that happens here is like you don't hear that in albums very often. Um, Definitely video game soundtracks. Anymore. Like it's soundtracks. yeah. This is a very unique style, I think. Even though it doesn't quite seem that way when you look at it first, like I, I can't think of very much that really hits the same mood as this record does. This kind of rustic acoustic vibe but also very eerie very dark very ambient um and for me this was probably one of the best albums that we've listened to for this episode just because i think it's really well put together it's not too long it's 55 minutes but it felt shorter to me i disagree like, it kind of it kind of slogged for me shorter to me too like i definitely don't feel the length Nah, I, but when we get near the halfway, I start looking at the tracks to see how many we got left. I, I don't know. I don't know what it was about this. Maybe it's just because I don't have that strong of a connection to the video game. Because like I said, I watched a mm. playthrough. I don't even know if I'm really going to bother playing Last of Us 2, but that's a whole other can of worms. What this album does well is setting up atmosphere. The mood and chilling atmosphere that this music brings is perfect. I just really think it's one note and really because I get the reprises, but there are some times where I'd like, did a song just repeat where I didn't really sense any variation. I listened to this four times and could not for the life of me really distinguish some tracks from a part. The only thing that really broke it up was a lot of these like African rhythmic drum beat parts that would happen from time to time, more which, tense, which more breaks it up. But I just yeah. don't think it's enough. I really don't think it was enough to really break it up. I do think this album slogs a bit. The 50, I'm really fifth in the 55 minute runtime near the end. I just think out of all four of these, if I had to think, would I come back to this? Like this is a mood album for sure for me. If I want to be put in this atmosphere, and here's the thing, all four of these albums we're going to be talking about make me want to play the video game in certain varying degrees. For me, this is definitely a mood album. Like I got to be in a certain mood to want to come back to a thing like this. However, I think in the context of the game, this music probably works perfectly. You have all these very intimate or harrowing, melancholic cutscenes or adventurous, action-packed, zombie fighting, raider fighting cutscenes, and the music probably reflects that perfectly. I just think when you bundle it all together, and this was like the issue with The Sims, to a lesser degree for me, is that in the context of the video game, it's got to be a little samey because it's spread really thin throughout like a nine hour 24 hour runtime video game so this music in this it's all together so it really starts to feel samey but i'm sure in the context of the video game it's like really varied because it pops up every so often it doesn't just hit you one two three at a time does that make sense i feel like i'm rambling here that does i i, I can see that and i see that this album honestly Oh, God, this album made me feel things. And I think it's probably because I am strongly connected with the game. Yeah, I could see that. Um, it, it brought back memories of playing the game. It made me reminisce just about the themes of the game, which are very intense and very hard hitting and very, they make you contemplate. And that's what this album did for me. Um, so maybe it is an album that is sort of connected to the game in that way. And that maybe did make me enjoy it more than I thought I wa was going to. But even still, I think this is a very, very well put together selection of music. 
just in general, even if you hadn't played the game before. But I do think playing the game would add to your enjoyment. Of right. It. And I do agree, out of the four, this is like the most album, album, I think. Because like I could definitely see a, like a big, that, yeah. I could see like big yeah. ambient heads getting into this, like huge ambient fans loving the this to death. Could totally see that because it really gives off a a mood and vibe that you don't really see in a lot of ambient works. I'm gonna give this thing like a light eight. I really did love my time with this. I love The Last of Us. I think the soundtrack is an absolutely fantastic part of the game. It works perfectly in the context of the game. You know, if I had to rate this on a gaming soundtrack scale, 10 out of 10, you know, like I think it works perfectly in the context of a game. And as an album, I, I love it anyway, too. I would go, um, I'm not as hot on it, even though I really do like it. I'd go with like a seven on the soundtrack uh, as just like listening to it for the show. As far as like a video game soundtrack, I would go maybe I would tend more towards a higher score, but I still think it's in like a high seven range because the strength of the game is, you know, the music is the backdrop. The strength of the game is the character performances and, you know, the intensity of the scenes, which the music is kind of, you know, it's not overstating itself. It's just becoming this like sad backdrop for the thing that's the most engrossing. And that's the story of the game and the characters in the game. So, you know, it, it's not the best video game soundtrack ever. It's more than serviceable. I think it's good, but I don't think it's one of the greatest I've ever heard or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I'm going a strong six. I probably, like, to a light seven on a good day. I think I liked it the least of you two, obviously. Uh, I think the strengths of this are the atmosphere and mood. And for a video game soundtrack and what the core responsibility of a soundtrack is, yeah, like, strong nine on that front because it's there to elevate the emotions that the game is giving you. And I think the music here when it's pretty obvious to tell what music goes for what scenes in the game, especially like the rhythmic African drum parts, that's obviously for like the more action-y parts. And I feel like that works perfectly. So yeah, strong nine for like as a video game soundtrack, as an album, strong six to a light seven. You know, it's, I'm probably never going to come back to this. It kind of makes me want to play the game, but I already know. I don't know. I've just never been a big Last of Us fan. So it's a shame I don't have that emotional connection. But I'm sure if I did, I would probably like this a lot more. There is definitely a nostalgic factor as we'll get into these next two albums for me personally. For these previous two, Sims and this one, not as much. I just think The Sims 3 did better what this one was doing as well, just in different contexts. The album I've picked is the classic video game soundtrack of Parappa the Rappa 1. Released in 1996, utilizes a lot of video gamey kind of music, a lot of MIDI is involved in this. The big aspect of this album that sets it apart from most video game soundtracks, and especially the four we've, or the two we've discussed at this point, is that there's a lot of hip hop and sampling utilized here. And I'm talking like classic golden age hip hop, not the new trap shit that everyone's talking about. No Playboy Cardi in this one. It is very classic AB, AB rhyme scheme and really it's like the cringiest shit we've ever done on the show. No, it's amazing. That is that's the worst thing you've ever said on the show. None of this new trap shit. That made me actually want to be dead. <laughs> <laughs> it has an old school vibe to it. It's got a boom bap sort mm -hmm. of beat and that's cool it's you, don't gotta <laughs> you don't gotta lambast trap in the freaking <laughs> interim so i should actually apologize my old head was showing there sorry about that this is 40 minutes long so the shortest album we've talked about but with 44 fucking tracks <clears throat> the big selling point is the <laughs> <laughs> oh i love you brian the big selling point of this is the main raps that uh, happen, which <laughs> sounds so white right now. It sounds so stupid. It's hard to explain that. The biggest selling point is the main rap, the rap <laughs> on uh, the hip hip the, the hip hop, hop, hop hippity hop. <laughs> okay, let me compose my record. thoughts. Let me compose my thoughts to give it's some an context. Album. Let me explain it because you have a hard fucking time. I've played the there, game. This oh. is, an, I, this is a, a freaking. It's a rhythm game on the PlayStation 1 back in the 90s. It's like yes. got a hip-hop vibe. You play as a dog who's a rapper, Parappa. This album has, 
a handful, uh, like maybe six or seven mm-hmm. actual like rap songs on it with vocals. Most of it is uh, like the rest cl- of the is like classical. The rest of the forty four tracks. It's like little MIDI compositions, yeah. like little uh, MIDI interludes that are all, for the most part, extremely short. Yes. Like less than a minute, sometimes less than 30 seconds, sometimes, sometimes less than 10 less seconds. Than 10 seconds. <laughs> Some grindcore elements here, for sure. Ugh. A lot of noise core influence. I think the garo garo go 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 It really more. shows through. So, to give some Masai, context, Amatsura. the plot of... So, Brian, I know you haven't played this game. June, have you played Parappa? I've never played Parappa. I know of Parappa, okay. but I've never so played Okay, so here's the context to make a lot of this make sense. A lot of the interludes between the raps, those are cutscene music. In the game, there's dialogue on top of those music that explains the story. And yeah. the story is essentially... That's what I figured. Yeah. The story is essentially, like, my girlfriend asked me, what's the... Who, is there a main villain in Parappa? I'm like, no, the main villain of Parappa the Rappa is his self-esteem. Like, that's... The it's big actually thing. the cops. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going and fucking up the rappers. It's awful. Yeah. It's all racial, too, despite them being dogs. Yeah, no kidding. Damn. <laughs> uh, so, the game is split up into six chapters, I believe, or five, I can't remember, where leading up to the first rap with Chop Chop Master Onion is <laughs> Parappa wants to be like the character Joe Chin, who's like this big, pompous tough guy who's like, ah, I've done all these cool things, and he, like, protects Parappa and his friends from some bullies, and Parappa's like, man, I wish I could fight, you know, stand at the bullies like that, so then he goes to to learn karate. The second chapter is Parappa wants to have a cool car like Joe Chin, and so he goes to get his <laughs> uh, license to where he raps with uh, instructor Mussolini. And then in the third portion, Parappa wrecks his dad's car, so he's got to earn money to pay it back. So he goes to help sell items at a flea market with Prince Flea Swallow. You didn't mention why he crashed the car. He actually rammed it into a police vehicle so his homies could get away with six bags of crack. <laughs> no, actually, in the track Rush to the Moon, that's when the crash six happens. Six bags of crack? <laughs> In the track Six Bags of Crack, they actually go into detail <laughs> no, about this encounter. In the track Rush to the no, Moon... this is not real. In the track Rush to the Moon, Prappa crashes the car, and the crash is so powerful that he flies to the moon and back down to Earth. It's kind of stunning in the video game. Uh, <laughs> so, he earns enough money to pay back the Brian's car. reaction to this story. He, so, he pays back God. The, his dad for the car... And then it's Sonny's birthday. Sonny Funny is Parappa's love interest, his crush. The whole story is like him trying to gain enough confidence to, to ask her out and be cool to her. In chapter four, her birthday's coming up, and Parappa's in charge with getting the cake. Well, Joe Chin, the smug son of a bitch, comes in and is like, look at this awesome cake I've got for Sonny, and accidentally knocks Parappa over, who destroys his cake. So he's got to get a new cake. So he watches cheap, cheap, cooking chickens cooking show to learn how to make seafood cake guaranteed to catch her heart and then the best part of the album is where so they go to the birthday party and they have a great time parappa drinks way too much and eats too much food and has to shit really bad so he's holding it in while he's taking sunny home and it gets so bad that's what the track straight to hell represents the weird noise that comes in, that's Parappa really needing to shit. Like, bad. And while this is going on, Sonny's like, damn, Parappa's looking really attractive because he's got this really stern face on him. Anyway, he goes to the restroom at a gas station, and wouldn't you know it, all the rap masters that he's rapped with are trying to go to the bathroom too. So they all have a huge rap battle to see who gets to shit first. Best song, by the way, the All Masters rap. Best song. That's the end. That's the end of the game. It's just them in the line. And then <laughs> still at the end of it all, Parappa's still a fucking incel, dude. That's terrible. And then no. So then it ends with Parappa getting to rap on stage with MC King Kong, like this weird tarantula weird character. I really don't know what he's supposed to re- what animal he's supposed to represent. Uh, there were some legal issues with getting the gorilla. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> and he raps with him and gets to perform in front of the whole town and impresses Sonny, and then uh, we end with a banger R&B love song, Funny Love, which is my favorite song off the album. So that's the whole context. So a lot of these in- these MIDI compositions 
play underneath all these cutscenes that lead up to the big raps, which are like the main selling point here. In the grand scheme of listening to this thing for the show, completely fucking worthless. Like, like those tracks, completely fucking worthless. Like, anything under 30 seconds here, for the purpose of listening to the show, totally worthless. I would agree. Designed to just loop over and over again. What they like, should have done. I, I, listened to, I listened to them once, gone. Didn't what listen to what they should have no done, point. and I really don't know why they did this for this album, is they should have just had the dialogue on top of it. That wouldn't have taken anything away and would have actually helped the flow of the story much better. They may have actually just fucking like thrown. Here's the list of files for the songs. Hey, let's just release this because people like this game. Like they may have just done that. I don't know because they it, flow it, just how they flow in the video game. So it's clearly the story. But yeah, but they would have. They could have, you know, stored them sequentially or whatever. Or well, right. yeah, or maybe they just ordered them sequentially on the release. If I was like, them, oh, I would have added. You know? I would have released it with a dialogue on top. I think that would have helped a lot. But you're totally right. The main thing here. I, I wouldn't want to listen to someone play. That would have been way fucking worse. I would not have wanted to listen to someone play through this game. Just don't put them in. Just release 20 minutes of music if that's all you have. But don't, don't, I don't want to hear the nine second, seven second. And it's like the bulk of this album. It is the majority of this album. It is almost all of this album. And then you have like 10-ish tracks, you know, that you need to hear off of this album. A track of 44. So, yeah, I mean, just skip them. It, but it, it is important to note that that is what most of the album is composed of, but you just choose to skip all the shit you're never going to remember that doesn't matter. I don't you know, for the purposes mind of listening to the, show. the MIDI tracks. I think they're very enjoyable and very cute and fun. I feel like this whole album and the game is very wholesome, and I just love the idea of like a character that is just trying to get over some self-esteem issues and to become a better person. It's super fun and cute and wholesome, and I think the music reflects that. Let's talk about these raps because goddamn parappa brings the heat the heat, the heat. <laughs> on this record oh my the god are great they are fan All fucking testing are well put together that i All agree the raps are hilarious i agree with that the the beats they are the, the beats are the best as part. hell they are super well made they are super fun the r&b love song at the end is super catchy funny love Freaking chop chop kick punch master onion. Yes. Fantastic. Yes. I'm wearing karate. Love the cheap cheap cooking chicken. Love I want to learn how to make a seafood cake. Love that. That has sex. the best oh, well. bar on it on the whole thing where she's like, uh, she's like, I'm a chicken, you beef jerky. Yeah. yeah this shit is actually fire. That's the only time that I'm like, that was fire. Like, that was actually <laughs> the awesome. The whole freaking, all of the actual <laughs> songs here are fantastic. So when I think of this soundtrack, I should mention that this was composed by Masaya Matsura. Forgot to mention who composed this. Fake fan. It's kind of clear there's a little bit of a uh, cultural divide here. You know, I feel like with a lot of the lyricism of how rapping should go, I think it adds, though, to the whole experience. These lyrics are so funny. And they're really catchy because it's a rhythm game, so you got to repeat what they're saying. So they get stuck in your head real quick, and I think it's kind of masterful. I know that three quarters of this record is the little interludes, and I understand that they're not really, in my opinion either, they're not worth listening to. Yeah, they're nothing to write home um, about. Kind of a, right. But so when I think about the soundtrack, though, I'm going to think about Chop Shop Master Onion. I'm going to think about, you know, you got to believe. Dude, that you song basically is. basically just treat it like it's the songs that are, you know, of a size the that focus matter. Of the game. Well, the, the, focus the big of the thing game. is. You, you just don't even like, well, it's not even worth like considering the whole thing as like, you know, like I'm just, just saying that to point it out. Like it's not necessarily something that fa it's not really fair to factor it in if they don't matter and you just delete them. You know what I mean? Like I, it's. Yeah, it's not an album. Listen. No. This at all. This is something where you can choose out the tracks. The, well, the actual rap yeah, songs and here. I, it definitely makes me want to play the game, for sure. I never played this game, so there's no I, nostalgia I at work either, here. You should. It's I actually really fun. It's really fun. It's actually really fun, and, and the story's very cute and wholesome. So the, the song songs here are the Jet Baby, which, some context there, the game opens up with them watching a movie, and the movie they're watching is Jet Baby, and that's her theme. That, the one, two, three, four... Five, six raps, the love you rap, let it, let it go, I'm almost on fire, which is just a poop joke, you know? It's a whole metaphor for that Parappa's gotta go 
bad, and he's about to shit all over the car in front of his girl. And then you have Katie and Sonny funny band anthem, which is a bop. I like that song. I fucking love that song. What do you? Why, Brian? I think it's annoying. It's that keyboard. It's an annoying piece. I think of it's. Shit. I, I think it's the only one of like the song songs that like kind of annoys me. I don't really but that, like key- that oh, do that do Oh, I love that keyboard. That song's so much fun. And then Funny Love, I think. My is, two. Like Funny Love is fucking fire. The, my two favorites are Cheap Cheap and the last one, Funny Love, which those are actually really you know yeah. Cheap Cheap is fucking awesome. Yeah, it's, that's it's sex. really funny. It's the only track I feel like where I'm enjoying listening to this like otherwise it's like okay like it's yeah. like mid to me got a shout uh, out oh instructor. no actually that's not true the ma- the all masters rap is actually awesome dude too. that bass um, that beat is amazing that bass the organ there's some, disgust- so there's good. some pretty dirty bass lines yeah yeah that sound really i got good. a shout out instructor so, Mussolini. But that's that and- i've got a shout out instructor Mussolini's rap that samples a song by the band can the song is called give me two seconds really Sample can. That is insane. Holy shit. That's like the, the convergence of worlds you would never expect. The song is called Turtles Have Short Legs. And yeah, that piano riff, they totally sampled that from the band Can. Amazing. Hilarious. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so with this thing, don't take it as a full album. Just go on YouTube, listen to all the raps. They're fantastic. You know, as a whole, as an album, this is probably like a, a light to decent six just because I guess you do have to take into consideration the majority of this thing is the interludes, which don't really add all that much. They really um, should have just had the dialogue there. I feel like the story flow would have been better leading up to the raps because that's the whole but point. this does have some of the best individual tracks. That yes, we've has the highest week. highs of this the episode. The highs here are, are high. fantastic. Not the highest highs on the whole episode. Oh, okay. Because we'll talk about Mario. Oh, fair enough. But I think it has the, the highest raps highs. Here the raps here are, are, fantastic. are supreme. Oh, as a game, I mean, I guess eight, eight out of ten. I've never played the game, so I wouldn't be able to tell exactly how it fits together. You really should. Um, but I do think that the main point of the game, obviously, is these songs, and the great songs are fantastic. Like, listening all the way through, like, yeah, I'm going to go, like, decent. I mean, if I were considering the interludes, like, I'm basically omitting them. If I was considering the interludes, I would be riding, like, the strongest three. Almost 80% literally worthless. So, like, you know, if we're considering that, but I don't think that's really fair because, that's you know, those are loading screens or whatever. So if you take, like, the tracks that matter here... And listen to a couple of the ones that are like a minute or, or over a minute, and then obviously all the full songs. I'm still at like a light to decent five, like at its best. I don't really, you know, I, I like a couple of the songs, but not super into it. Not a lot of nostalgia at play, right? And for me either to kind of warm me up to this thing. So I don't know. I, I wasn't super into it. That's fair. Um, nah. And the tracks are simple enough to where like the instrumentals are really good. But, you know, I mean, they're not, like, blowing me away or anything like that. I know that's kind of a dumb complaint, but, you know, they're good, but they're not amazing. Well, here's the thing. I I think this album is a breeze to sit through. I'm probably going to go with a strong 7 and maybe a light 8 on a good day. But if it's a good day, I'm just going to play the video game. You know what I mean? Like, as as far as a full album, is it worth it to sit through the mini tracks to get to the raps? I think so. Because the raps are so fucking good. It's worth it to sit through a couple MIDI compositions that go by like at the snap of a finger. You're really not losing much here. And it's 40 minutes, shortest album we've listened to, we've had to listen to for this episode. I don't think it's a big deal. It does take it down because there's not a lot there unless you know the game. And even then you don't really have context because there's no dialogue. But as it stands, the MIDI compositions, I love the use of trumpet. The MIDI trumpet is masterfully used in a lot of these songs. Overall, I think it's pretty solid. Has some of the highest highs for sure. I think the MIDI compositions are fine. And having to listen to them f- to get to the good stuff, I think is worth it. So yeah, I'd say it's strong seven. Is the video game soundtrack, I mean, it is super memorable. It just doesn't strike me as something that I remember playing through, right, or have a familiarity with. So I'm coming in completely blind. But I mean, it, 
this game is about the music and to me the music doesn't really stand out at least the main tracks that like you know the main rap songs here but still i mean i would still go like decent to strong six as far as like a game soundtrack that's grading my personal attachment to it i'd go a 10 because the raps here are the the main selling point of the game the music and they're so memorable like these songs have really stood the test of time because parappa the rapper is still a beloved character and is an ip that is still well known in the video game world like not too long ago they remastered the first one for ps4 and it's awesome and parappa the rapper 2 is just as good has some even better music in my opinion in this one i think just this one's just more memorable but as a video game soundtrack yeah like 10 because literally this album is the game in audio form like from front to back and I think when you watch the cutscenes with these MIDI compositions underneath, it totally fits the vibe and wholesomeness that the world is creating. So yeah, I think as a video game soundtrack, it works perfectly fine. As an album, yeah, just listen to the main raps. Just play the video game, honestly. That would be my main thing to say here. The takeaway is just play the fucking video game, because it's a classic. So when we decided to do a video game music episode, I wanted to do something Nintendo. If I was going to do something Nintendo, it was probably going to be something released by Koji Kondo, just legendary video game music composer. He's done Super Mario Bros. 3, Super Mario World, Yoshi's Island, Super Mario 64, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, and Wind Waker, among others. So that's just an absolutely incredible series of video game soundtracks under his belt. Um, And I, I thought about doing one of the Zelda ones, but they're fairly long. They are more around like 90 minutes than an album. And we were already doing four records for this episode, uh, so I didn't want to do something too long. So I chose the Super Mario 64 original soundtrack released in 1996 for the N64. This is just a completely legendary video game soundtrack. This is the easiest pick that anybody could choose this week. There are songs here that are just part of the internet's cultural subconscious at this point. Much of what you have here is made with sequencer and MIDI, but there is a lot of variety and the kinds of instrumentation used and just the general vibes, because when you look at a Mario game and when you look at Super Mario 64, what you have is a series of very different, very characterized levels. And all of the tracks here are just meant to enhance The atmosphere of, you know, a big snowy mountain or a lava place or just like a weird, you know, like all of these places, all of these stages in Super Mario 64 are very, very memorable in their own right. And so when listening to the soundtrack, it kind of puts you back into those stages. It all is just supposed to amplify that experience. Me personally, I absolutely adore this thing. I heard a lot of details that I didn't hear while playing the game that you just don't necessarily hear when you're more focused on the game itself. A lot of intricacies with the drum programming, almost some like drum and bass type grooves yes, happening Yes, especially the, the classic Mario themed drum and bass version. And this is pretty fantastic. Uh, it's kind of new agey in a fantastic way. There's a lot of, like some of the bass lines have this funkiness to them that I didn't really notice in playing the game. There's just a million details here and a lot of creative instrumentation that just makes this actually worth going back to for me as an album because there's a lot to pick out that you might not notice with just one listen. This album has one major flaw that holds it back. Don't you say the end of the album where there's a bunch of sound effects. No, no. They're very short. No, that's usually what Brian complains about. I have one major complaint with this album is that a lot of these songs go on way too fucking long. Like, oh, screw you. They should go on longer. I mean, here's the thing in the context of the video game, perfect. This is a classic, nostalgic, easy pig, like you mentioned. However, when you're playing a Mario game, you're doing a ton of shit all the time. So you're never really like focusing on the music as much and the music is very good. So it never really comes off as repetitive. However, when you're having to sit down and listen to these, while great compositions, it comes to a point where it's like, okay, this should have ended and it's still going. 
And when you notice but that, these songs are all like less than four minutes long. They're all really short. They should be like a minute or two at most, and then move on to the next one. Like the Don't fucking. Don't say that about like. I love a lot of these songs. Like they're classic, but I mean, for Christ's sake, the drum and bass version of the Mario uh, classic theme goes on way too long. What? You're insane. Way, way it's too long. Fantastic. It just re- It's so great. It's only three and a half minutes. It's a groove. And, it's and just it, a repetitive, fun groove. The thing is, a lot of these songs detail. have a flow, and then once they get to the end of their idea, just repeat. And it's like it should just end right there, next song. Like, wow. Oh, well, lo- I love I love continuing to ride that groove. I'd listen to like a 10 minute I love riding it song. when I'm playing the ride video the game, but if I'm just listening to the music, I love these songs, but man, like, should have been shortened a lot. However, some of these... What do you think about Fire Dire Docs? Oh, that's a classic. Now, that one actually has a lot of movement to shortened? it. No, because that one actually adds things in as it goes along. A lot of these just repeat. Okay. Dire Dark Socks is like, a top tier track. You can't, yeah. When the drums come in, like, yeah, that's awesome. I mean, Paradox is literally one of the greatest songs ever created. Oh it's yeah, it's that good, so good. What do you think, Brian? Me and June are kind of at a divide here. Who, what do you think? This is a super iconic soundtrack, like, and it's but like, as it an album, like as an album, it doesn't necessarily hold up as like an album listening experience, but it doesn't matter because like. I mean, it's too late. I like it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's really how it feels. Like, as I'm most, it's like, it's too late. I like all this. Like, I already liked all this. I knew I liked all this. I'm hearing it yeah. again in, you know, a certain order. It doesn't matter. I like all this. I don't know. You I think know, all the music in that game is super good. So, like, as flow, playing, I'm just like, yeah, Mario 64 is amazing. The like, flow of this that's album. That's really all I'm thinking. I mean, as far, like, there's the section that's all the sound effects in a row, but it just kind of gets them out of the way. It's whatever. Yeah. You don't even have the to listen to The flow of this it. album. So, is in the same way that, like, you can not think about it for Parappa. You can just not think about it for this. And then if you don't, it's, it's like, wait, this is flames. Yeah. And like, it's all flames. Like, it's pretty much all flames. I all mean, the yeah, time. on their There's own. Nothing. You know, the Mary Go track is annoying, but like, whatever. It's a minute. And it's like, oh, I remember that part of the game. It's in Boo's Haunted Mansion or whatever. And that yeah, level's no. great. It's I like agree. A level too. I agree. So I, I just, don't know, man. I was predisposed to think it was amazing. And it was amazing. So, I mean, yeah. You want from me? Like, no. necessarily album listening experience, like, not necessarily amazing but like as just yeah. like a game soundtrack i mean it's incredible oh yeah like, it's mean, one of the greats you know, for a reason it's, like it's there's no there's no other soundtrack from this era that's as iconic except maybe like a donkey kong country ocarina of time i, I think yeah about well, well perhaps nearly and it's also koji kondo yeah koji kondo is a legend for a reason i think just if we're talking about an album here a lot of these songs should have been shortened because they have an idea they use it all up and then just repeat it. And it's like, maybe repeat it twice and then move on to the next song. They repeat it like four or five times to the point where it's like, once I notice that it's just repeating, it's like, it really gets kind For of me, like... it sets such a great mood and it's so groovy that I don't care that it repeats. I, mean, I just think it's an exceptional musical idea. What do you think of the flow of this album? I think the flow of I this... I think it's great. It, it, it yeah. flows... <laughs> It flows like a. I think the like flow a, is fantastic. It flows like a stopped up pipe, June. It doesn't flow at all. <laughs> like it. Just, I think it's I mean, great. It's just, I mean, it's not like the most like back to back track. Like it tries like, to. Like, I mean, like it doesn't like sh- like okay. Technically speaking, The Sims has better flow, but The Sims is also way more milk toast. I think this so, like, has better flow. You know what I mean? Like this one. I mean, moves right. from like I mean, like memorable tr- track to memorable track. In the beginning portion of it, it tries to do like the order of what you would hear when playing the video game but then like near the back half it it just throw like random order here like we're not even i don't know i just but then the ending with the last with the fanfare now now the the, end and the staff ending and then a nice piano piano, now piranha plant lullaby yeah the the whole thing the one the one the one two punch of staff roll and piranha plants lullaby piano version flawless fucking fantastic Love that one-two punch right there. That's a great song, Staff Roll. Like, I don't ever really remember liking Piranha that. Plants Lullaby is a bang. It's so amazing. Like, it, it's on there twice, and you're just like, yeah, this is uh, It deserves to be on there twice. I think my favorite portions are, like, the Koopa stuff. That's, like, my favorite chunk of the album is the... Yeah, the Bowser. The Bowser. Oh, the Bowser's theme is... It's Slide. 
It slides. Slides. Come on. That yeah. shit is flames. That is yeah. better than all the pepper raps. It's better than any of the whatever shit, you know, the bull, the elevator Sims music. It's better than all the super beautiful lines. But... That is like level 11, like music making. Like that is like strong 11 out of 10, like <laughs> levels of it, to music, me, video game music. That's Dire Dire Docs for me. Uh, I yeah. think Dire Dire Docs, like I will just listen to that song on its own all the time. I think it's just so for me, beautiful. The melody is amazing when the drums come in. For me, it's inside the castle walls. That's great too. Bum, it's bum, bum, ba, da, da. What's the one? That's, uh, bum, I mean, that one's bum, great too. Bum. My favorite is the. Uh, it's also at the beginning, and that's the one I remember the most. That's like the moment I'm playing. It's the first level you play, Big Bob Bombs. The level. main the theme. Yeah. That's like, oh shit, I'm Mario. Dude, dude, the, the MIDI the trumpet. It's amazing. It's fucking incredible. Like it's so good. I mean. Uh, it's, this is literally like in music the divide between the greatest of all time in terms of like albums or songs or like there's so much variety that there's not it is like universally great like in gaming things are way more in stone people know what the fucking classics are like there are you know that's in, in music there are established classics right but you don't always like them sometimes you got to find your dip because it's so but like who in the video fuck games, hates mario who there the is like hates? no fucking discord it's like no Mario 64 classic. is incredible. Yeah, classic. And anyone who says it's shit, I can measure that you're wrong. I can measure it. I can prove it. Enough people think this is true that you must be wrong. And like that's not a good argument normally, but this is like, there's no section of the population that actually dislikes this and isn't also a Nazi. It's true. Like, I, <laughs> Yeah, and here's the thing. <laughs> No gaming soundtrack makes me want to play the game more than this one. I mean, just, this, it's incredible. It is honestly incredible. Hearing the first, as far as like an amazing listening, like as far as like an album experience, it's not amazing. But like oh, hearing I the disagree. first, I, hearing the I would first, to this album again. hearing the first, it's a me, Mario. <laughs> I want to pop in the N64 cartridge immediately. Like it, no cap. I'm like, immediately. I hear that shit, I'm like, that's him. That's really him. <laughs> that's, our like, that's our boy. That's our plumber. Yes. June, you're right though. Yeah. This has you high highs. This has like, like this has skyscraper cool. highs. Yeah, this I mean, so this album has skyscraper highs. Like it's really hard to compete when you have songs like Slide, Inside the Castle Walls, Dire Dire Dogs, Bob on Battlefield, or the file select music. This actually and it does Beautiful. things like the invincibility music, like when you have the star. Yeah. You actually realize how detailed that song really is. Like Dude, how much exactly. goes There's into it. So much in all of these songs. Dude, that you don't it's so crazy that you mentioned the drum and bass life. elements, but like they are scattered throughout this release. The drum and bass. Yeah, yeah. It's the drum really programming cool. Here is super cool. It's a little bit of a product of its time. Like this was around the time when drum and bass oh. was really getting popular. So it's of course it's kind of in there, but it's I just used realized. Perfectly. Um, I just re I totally agree with the Bowser sentiment earlier too. All that stuff is super memorable too. Yeah, that, oh, yeah, like, that whole chunk. I don't know. They just it's the only one of all of these that we listen to besides maybe I mean, The Last of Us it's there's like a grand canyon between this and The Last of Us, but like, you know, I, I think in, in terms of this point is that, you know, the, they don't just think about okay, we got what do you want to listen to while you play the game? What's kind of the vibe? They also go okay, here's the vibe. Now let's write a great song. And that's what it feels like they did here. They didn't just, yeah. you know, I know Parappa has a little more involved and I'm just not as into it because they probably, I think they did that there too. It just well, didn't I think it, I think it's just because you don't um, have a connection to the game. I feel like if you play the game, your opinion would be a little right. differently because yeah. it's a classic game. This one, so who the fuck has not played at least one Mario game, let alone who? 64? It's amazing. You want to talk about classic? This is like a cornerstone of video It was games. the first 3D platformer. The first. To this day. To this day, this is actually a game that when it came out was experimental. Like this yeah. is like a different. It was like, like it, it, it actually is. It actually is. Yeah, it this was is, the you first. You can move diagonally now. That's fucking nuts. And and like they, there's a Z axis. And they and not only this is not about the music. Not only did they brave this new front, but they actually perfected it like first try, try. like yes. the, the controls aren't perfect 
but like they but they kind the of are is they like kind a of piece are. of science equipment yeah but, but they nailed it they fucking nailed they set it. the standard and every level is super memorable Dude. shut up Chaz. every level is super distinct and memorable and mario is a, an amazing person and they made him 3d and it was like hey he doesn't actually even look that fucking ridiculous honestly and oh god it's so good it's such an amazing game. It's like one of the best games ever and will be one of the best games. It, it, it existed at a time. Like games obviously now are looking better, et cetera, et cetera. But they will never, ever, ever, ever be able to replicate something. because I, I, At least not more than like three or four times in our in like human history, I feel like. Because it was such a perfect time for that game to come out. Is this new system capable of like 3D now? And they just... It's like they understood it before they even knew what it was. It's just insane. It's just incredible levels of immaculate conception. Now you're right. They set the standard right out of the gate, which is and the songs are pretty good too. So you know. <laughs> 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 not, they're okay. You know, you I just, it's an it's an, no one needs to hear how amazing of a game Mario sixty four is, but it is literally. It's like the Beatles. <laughs> like it really, it's like the Beatles of modern gaming history. I'm sure some of the Zelda games are that way too, but those are for virgins. So, Mario players fuck. Oh, I see. Oh yeah, facts. Big facts. Chad's facts, play Mario. Facts. Facts. Chad, that is facts, Chad's man. play Mario. You see these Wind Waker. Do you see these uh, pussyless Wind Waker players running around doing, you know, getting in any beds that aren't theirs? So fuck, nah, fuck the, you. The I've been people, playing Breath of the Wild. So the much people lately. playing Odyssey, coochie for days. They fucked on release day. Facts. They fucked on release day. My God, that, that wasn't the only midnight release. But you know what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, yeah. my God. Look, ten out of ten video game soundtrack as an album. Love the songs. I just think the flow, the length of some of the tracks, just put it in a bad place for me because it just makes me want to play the game. Like first track, I want to play the game. I don't even want to listen to the fucking album. I just want to play the fucking video game. So I think a decent, a strong seven as an album, but. I mean, it's a classic. 10 out of 10 for a video game soundtrack. No I'd question. Go like, I'd go like light, strong 7, light 8 as an album. Like, yeah, I still do enjoy it. But uh, I kind of enjoy it more while I'm playing the game. It's kind of like a package deal for me. But, I mean, as like a video game soundtrack, 12 out of 10. The only I give it 12. I don't care. I don't care how it works. I give it a 12. As a video game soundtrack, this is definitely a 10 out of 10. As an album? I think your all's ratings are too low. <laughs> decent fucking nine this is amazing i would listen to this album i will absolutely come back to this as an album i think it flows great as an album i think all these tracks are fantastic never bored i'm only amazed this has some of the greatest songs ever conceived the it's a me mario four second clip at the beginning 10 out of 10 it's, be hey, it's, mario it's, it's better than the, the opener for slint you know it really is the Super Mario 64 main theme. The do 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 do. 10 out of 10. Dire Dire Dox, 12 out of 10. Dire Dire Dox is one of the greatest songs anybody in the whole history of the universe has ever come up with. It's incredible. The file select music, the 45 second oh, file awesome. select music oh. is beautiful. Beautiful. The Bowser level music is fantastic. And the Piranha Plant piano bit at the end. I wish makes they want to uh, cry. I wish they released uh, the uh, the sound it makes when you delete a save right at the end of the save screen. <laughs> 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 no, it's just really nice. Like, oh, this is really pleasant. Whoa, what the fuck, Mario? <laughs> is he okay? I want to rate all of the little interludes, like all the little like sound effects. Ten out of ten. Ten out of ten. I actually fuck with that opinion. You know, yeah. like. I could see this being like a light eight on a good day, like. It, but again, I, I'm not gonna listen to the album. I'm gonna play the fucking video game. Like that's just the bottom line here. Oh, it's not the album. Bottom line, you're a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Oh. oh man. All right. This was fun. I'm it. glad we did this. This was a fun episode. It's oh. fun to talk about these soundtracks. We will albums. probably definitely do this again. Down the line, we most um, likely. Yeah, will. I just need some better picks. You know, I just uh, need y'all to step it up a dude, little bit. Dude, play. Well, fuck you! How am I supposed to step it up from here? 
That's your problem. Do Odyssey? Like probably uh do Odyssey. Super Mar- probably Super Mario World. Probably Super Mario yeah. World. Yeah. Ooh. Next yeah. episode is gonna be a regular episode. We're just gonna talk about any album we want. I've decided we need some more country in this podcast. I actually picked a Zelda album. I, I just love it. <laughs> I, <laughs> you, there are no rules against it. I just figured, you know. I have chosen the 1974 record Jolene by Dolly Parton. Ah, some Dolly uh, Parton? We've okay. Heard, we've all heard that title track. We all know the song Jolene. But I think the whole album is absolutely worth listening to in its own right. There's even songs on there I listen to more than I listen to Jolene. So I'm excited to talk about it. Uh, we're going to do one of the classic black metal records, one of the Unholy Trinity records, as they're like called, Dark Thrones, A Blaze in the Northern Sky. Just one of the classic black metal records, one of like the best in the genre. And I think so, too. I think it's awesome as well. So, you know, I, I just want to talk about it. It's kind of an easy pick, but, um, yeah, it's where we're at right now. I'm going to do the underrated classic. This is a band that, Maybe some of you have heard of, uh, especially if you've watched or read Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. It's the Canadian all-female band Plum Tree with their second studio album, Predicts the Future, released in 1997. Some underrated classic indie rock for you. All right, well, that was the show. That's the three of us. I'm doing the outro like always. This is Brian Courtney. I've been here with June Lindbergh. I will actually murder you. And Chaz Jenkins. I want to thank my wonderful girlfriend for bringing The Sims 3 to this amazing episode of Unwarranted Music Opinions. Yet another guest bringing something that wasn't as good as Tanner's pick. All right, we got, you know, <laughs> we'll see you all around. Yeah, next time. We're doing albums. How was that? Is that good? Yeah, decent five. Can we use that? He That's fair. I'm kind of new. Bad. All right, well, I have time to grow into this role. No, you do not. <laughs>